Hello and welcome to the next webinar in our series. Thank you for joining us again this time. Uh, and like always, please get involved with the questions on the chat box. There'll always be someone monitoring that. And if not, we'll get back to you later with any detailed questions. Also, throughout the webinar, we'll be pushing out some literature as well. So make sure you download that and, and start speaking to us through our, through our marketing. So the purpose of today is to discuss foundations on soil farms and we would like to just express to you guys how we can work with you to potentially reduce or replace the types of foundations that you're working with uh, so you can feel the benefits of steel savings and less machinery on site and a safer working environment on site. Also it may lead to faster installations of sites in general so there is uh, economies to have in that, in that sense as well. So, First of all, I'd like to start just talking about Gripple in general with regards to geotechnical um, engineering and geomechanics. So like I said in the first webinar, all them months ago now, Gripple are experts in geotechnical engineering. Uh, we're engineers, we have engineers all around the world um, that know all the different soil types and different interactions between soils and how that works and how we can use them engineering properties to, uh, to solve problems. Um, so that's, we've got a little bit of pedigree in, in geomechanics anyway and during this webinar at this point we'll just cut to a video of some of the case studies we've done in our civil engineering uh, division of Gripple. This is where we are um, building roads or uh, stabilising slopes at the side of roads or rivers or even flood defences and things like that. So again this is just to give you an idea of um, where we work in the geotechnical space and then we'll move on to how we can apply that to solar farms and the structures that you guys may be building or may, may need help, our help with. We know a lot about geomechanics and things like that and what we want to do is apply that knowledge to the solar industry to try solve some problems. Now we know that one of the most important parts of a, a ground mount uh, PV site is the foundations. Without getting that right everything else can go wrong. You know we've got a lot of external loads, seismic, wind, animal and things like that. We can move a frame around and potentially lead to damage of the expensive part, the panels or the part that's going to generate the electricity or the return of investment uh, for you guys. So we understand it's very important to get that right. So what we want to do is work with our geotechnical expertise to ensure that's right whilst building in some savings and some benefits as well. We want to do that through our anchoring expertise. So a ground anchor is, this is one of our smaller examples, is a very, very simple piece of technology that's installed into the ground vertically and when you pull onto the wire it flips the anchor into the ground which locks into the soil. Now with a geotechnical investigation we can work out what loads that, that anchor could handle. You know, this anchor for example at 1.5 metres down may do up to 2 tonnes of uplift uh, resistance, so applying that to a stroller, solar structure you can see how we can start to help the foundation design and really start, try to start to simplify it. So the anchors work in various different ways depending on the soil types and we won't go into that in too much detail now. All you need to know and understand is that we know and understand that and we want to work with you guys, work with your engineers to build that understanding on a project by project basis, taking in the geotechnical report and showing what we can do and supporting that with on-site trials and things like that and some on-site testing really just to build that confidence in, in anchoring in general. So there's lots of different applications for this. One key application we've found is in repairs and refusals. Now, no matter how good a geotechnical report may be, there's always going to be issues on site. We're getting on sites where uh, the soil may not be as stiff as expected or it may be too loose, so piles aren't ab able to be uh, installed deep enough or when they are installed deep enough, have too much uh, like overturning movement, too much pivoting around the base point. So where an anchor can work in that situation is really as a secondary reinforcement to that pile. So literally just holding onto the pile at the top and stopping any lateral movement or any uplift as well. So that's a really basic way we can start to get involved in sites that may be going wrong and speed up uh, the installation. Um, obviously with that it means there's less time with machinery trying to get deeper piles or transporting new piles to site that might be bigger. Uh, and, or, or adjusting piles down as well. So we can plug into existing sites that might be problematic and try to solve them problems. Again, knowing the reactions on the piles and knowing what types of moments are acting on them, we can ensure that we specify the right anchor to solve the right problem at the right time 
given the soil type. So again, I really implore you to speak to our engineers, speak to us in general, work out what we can do and how we can plug into your schemes right now. The other thing that anchors can do is really quite interesting in that it can help us design sites in a more lean efficient manner. So I've spoken uh, in the past about how Gripple products can reduce the amount of steel uh, that may be necessary on site, which has benefits in terms of handling and transport and installation, the environmental benefits of that as well. And as we know, steel prices have gone through the roof. So any little, any little efficiencies we can get across that frame with these products should be extremely beneficial to you guys as end users, developers, EPCs or engineers. So what we look to do, again, like I've just mentioned, is look at the, um, the moments and the reactions of forces acting on a foundation point and see how we can employ our anchors to overcome them. Now, anchors work extremely, extremely well in tension. They don't do a lot in compression. So that, what that means with a pile system is we can look at taking care of all the uplift from, from the site, from the, from the reactions that can be calculated for a site, the lateral movement, again, can be taken care through an anchor through a guide system like that, like you would do a tent. Um, and also the overturning moment can be taken care of in the same manner. Now, what that means is your pile design is already taken care of for many of the degrees of freedom that you have to think about. And now, really, you only have to worry about the sinking. So we can really simplify the, um, the foundation mechanics that you guys may have to do. And we can get involved in that as well to see how we can increase those efficiencies. So what does that mean? Well, it means we can maybe use less steel on your piles. We know we can use less steel on the piles. Um, you know, the, the sinking part of it is almost one of the easiest calculations to do. So something else to note on that, you know, we, we, we've been doing this, we've been trialing it around the world. And going back to my previous statement of, you know, helping piles to uh, resist the lateral forces made when things are going wrong. We've got sites in Spain, for example, where we've worked on um, the piles and added the anchors as a secondary reinforcement to that and increased that pile efficiency by 65% in, in that example. Now, imagine if we could apply that to the start of the site so you can start looking at how that efficiency increase in pile may mean you can reduce the, amount, the size of the pile either by section, depth, or, or anything like that. So already you can see handling becomes easier and installation becomes easier just by a very, very simple anchor. Another way that we've found uses for this is on concrete ballast systems. So concrete ballast systems are very, very popular ways of doing foundations. Now, I've said earlier on that even this small anchor here can take maybe up to two and a half tons in certain soils in a dense sand, for example, at one and a half to two meters down. So that means from one anchor point, all the weight of your ballast system can come out and your ballast system just acts as a pressure pad resisting the down forces from the frame or any overturning moments that might be pushed onto the soil. So that means maybe you can get rid of all the concrete from the site, which again, environmentally, is fantastic in terms of um, in, you know, the CO2 impact, but also look at the transport and again, the installation and ha handling. Everything becomes much, much easier. We're using the engineering properties of the materials that are already on site. So we can, from the geotechnical report, we can say, right, this soil has this characteristics, we'll apply some safety factors and say, right, so these anchors should be doing this load in that, in that, in that situation, and then we go out and test it, make sure it works, and hey presto, you've got a working system without taking all of that concrete on site. Like I just said, maybe two and a half tons of concrete replaced with this. So the, that, that, that benefit should be quite clear. So another way we like to work with engineers on this is, is not just speaking about how we can reduce them types of foundations, your piles, your concrete piers, your ballasted systems and things like that. But like I've just articulated, by using a simple pressure pad, maybe a simple steel plate on the ground, maybe that's buried only 100 mil, 200 mils deep, along with a guide anchor system, you should be able to take care of all degrees of freedom for that pile movement and therefore not have to break ground at all over them with the anchor. So at this point, what we'll do is just, we'll just cut to a um, product focus video just showing the anchor being installed so you can get to gra grips with how easy it is and how simple it is and how the system looks on site.
hopefully from that little product focus video, you can see how easy uh, these anchors can be installed and applied to various different mounting systems, like I said, ballasted, piled, concrete peered, or any kind of frame as well. Again, like I said in the first webinar, we are manufacturers, so we can make sure the right bracketry or systems is available to seamlessly integrate into the, whatever framing system is on site. So we can make sure that we match ideally and really, really get the efficiencies out of that installation time. So we can really get in and out of site quickly and effectively as well, which hopefully you've seen from the speed of that video, how fast we can be. Now, again, compare that to potentially piles or casting concrete or even shipping concrete blocks in, um, the time savings are fairly big as well. So again, in terms of getting the site up ready safely um, and cost effectively, it's a really fast process to get that site up and running. So we can get energy out of there faster potentially and people can start making money and start enjoying uh, a return on investment in that point. So. What I also want to note, note about this is, again, I've mentioned a couple of times about the piling machines and things like that. What we've also mentioned in previous webinars is a desire to build solar farms in more remote areas where potentially heavy machinery can't have access. But also people are running out of good land to build these things on and everyone wants more solar farms, which is great for us as an industry, but poses interesting challenges geotechnically to actually build these things. So remote areas, for example, may have difficulty getting large machinery up there for prolonged periods of time. A system like this can help, uh, like I say, reduce the foundations or replace the foundations um, with hand tools or very, very small machines. So again, it's very effectively for rapid deploying into various corners of the world. You know, we've had these anchors installed in the mountains of Argentina or down in South Africa in remote areas as well, where big machines would not it wouldn't be as possible to get access but also on that point is the fact that we're not damaging the ground too much yes we're going into it um, but we're not upsetting lots of ground so environmentally that's very positive but from a land point of view that also potentially opens up brownfield sites contaminated land and landfills where heavy penetration of the ground may not be possible so we've looked at landfills in the past which may have a cap on them of let's say um, three quarters of a metre to a metre, we can use these anchors at that depth without penetrating the landfill cap to support the, uh, the piling systems or the vertical systems of the structure, maybe on a pressure pad or maybe on a ballasted system. So again, we can reduce the amount of ballast you need where the ballast is only really looking after the downwards forces on the system. So really, these systems can really open out lots of different types of land to be used, which again, makes it very, very interesting to developers and things like that to, to, to get to get going on these otherwise unusable uh, sites. We're gonna to go to a Q&A session after this, so please ask as many questions as you want. Again, we've got, we're, we're experts at anchoring, we've been doing it a long time in various different industries, so I have lots of good experience. So if you want to ask for more examples of that, please feel free to. Like I said, there'll be some literature out there to download as well. Um, I employ you just to get in touch with us again, you know, I'm really enjoying doing these webinars and speaking to a, um, a lot of people and we get some good questions and good emails off the back of it as well. So please continue to do that. Um, and hopefully this is as interesting, uh, like I said, the important things is, is the potential savings, the environmental impact, the health and safety impact by not having these big machines. There's plenty of great benefits that we can discuss with you guys. Again, hand in glove with your engineering teams or your development teams to make sure we use the right system at the right time, safely to the right factors of safety as well to give you confidence in what we're doing. And again, we're happy to walk through all that with you, some of the calculations, how we do things. And again, we love getting on site please get us a site trial. We're happy to come and do some testing with you guys as well. So again, please, please, please get in touch. Um, it's a very simple, uh, simple solution to a very difficult problem, but we're confident we can solve it. Like I said, we can take care of um, uplift, lateral forces and overturning moments with an anchors, with the anchors. So you guys just have to worry about sinking, but we can work with you on that. So again, please get in touch and feel free to ask any questions. Thank you very much for attending. We've got one more webinar to come closer to Christmas on, um, on bifacial solar, on, on you know, the reflective materials underneath the panels. So I look forward to discussing that with you guys then. So please sign up for that as well and uh, stay in touch. Thank you very much.